think one of the things that we thought was really important, you know, in developing the first movie was that we didn't think you could put a guy in bandages, and we always envisioned it as being something more special, and that's why we went in to CGI land. Right off, I said, nobody wants to see a guy wrapped in bandages. We have to do computer-generated mummies and make it really as realistic and believable as possible. And, of course, with Imhotep, is very, very elaborate, and he became much more elaborate in the second picture, but then there were some other characters. There was more than one mummy in the original mummy picture. There was also the priest mummies. Who the hell are these guys? Priests. Imhotep's priests. But then I thought, oh, we have all these priest mummies. That should really be a throwback, a wink to the 1932 Boris Karloff version. One of the things that we did have some fun with is the notion that they were a little bit more akin to, you know, where the mummy used to be, say, the 1932 Universal Mummy, because they really are guys wrapped in bandages. Because, you know, one of the things that's so lovely about the mummy films is that there's a great interaction between, you know, comedy and horror and action. <laughs> We thought that these guys provided, you know, a little bit of comic relief. So that's what we did. Those guys, even though some of them are CG, because we had to you know, cut them in half and tear their heads off and stuff, but we did a lot of guys wrapped in bandages, and that was fun. We always saw the possibility for them to be a little bit more comic. Imhotep has to be straight. He has to be scary. And the soldier mummies have to be really scary and, you know, powerful. But I, I can play around. Well, here's, here's a chance now. We got these priest mummies, and most of them are wrapped in bandages. And it's kind of a wink and a nod to the earlier pictures. So I thought, oh, I can have some fun with them. So we, you know, that's where a lot of humor in, the, in those moments came out of. And certainly, uh, Brendan Fraser, as Rick O'Connell, has a great time with them. Uh, he takes off one of the guy's heads and bats it like a baseball. <laughs> One of the priest mummies also, uh, his hand comes back and is trying to get the, the, the sword away from Brendan. <laughs> to bring these creatures to life requires a lot of people. And, and you know, in the, in the case of the priest mummies, there were actually guys in suits. There were actually... Uh, you know, animatronic elements, and then the scene is worked out with stunt guys, so there actually are guys yeah, working in the scene with Brendan, and they work out all of the action with Steve Summers and the, and with the stunt coordinator and the visual effects guys, and they figure out exactly what the action is going to be. And so if you were to look at the original plate, it's Brendan running around that altar, you know, swinging a sword at, at a bunch of mummies that aren't there, and it, he does it very, very effectively, and in the end, it's the reason the effect is so much fun. <laughs> Then there are their brothers, their sort of meaner brothers, the, uh, the soldier mummies, um, who are the guys that sort of like have the sort of maybe Wizard of Oz looking, you know, tin looking hats and, and the body armor on them. Those guys are uh, a, a lot more badass. So they're uh, a definitely a formidable foe. And the soldier mummies are part, part real, part real guys marching in unison, but then the minute they start doing, you know, climbing up walls and crawling across ceilings, they, you know, we need a little computer enhancement. I think in the end, you know, it was a very nice collaborative effort and came up with really great designs and you see how well it works out.